Don't want to be an American idiot. Don't want a nation under the new media. Uh, did Obama cut taxes for 90% of Americans as promised? No. No. And, uh... My fellow teabaggers, my fair and doting sisters, my intelligent and not at all racist brothers, hear me. There are a great many plagues that threaten our freedoms. Our American way of life is being assaulted on many fronts. We have bravely stood against Americans seeking something called inalienable rights, and stood against other Americans seeking religious freedom. This mouse that they're trying to build, all it is is a training center. We Tea Partiers have bravely stood against any idea that scares us. Some may laugh and make fun of us as though we're some sort of spectacle. Some may brush off our conspiracy theories with logic and reason, but such things will never deter us. We know the truth, that the science of global warming is secretly just a money-making scheme for Al Gore. Even though Forbes magazine shows us that Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck and other global warming science deniers make tons more money denying global warming science than Al Gore ever did. And even though NASA and 99% of the world's scientific community can use regular high school biology to show us how global warming science exists, we know better. Even though any temperature trend study can show us that this is the overall hottest decade in recorded human history, we refuse to be deterred by science, and I commend us for it. This guy doesn't look like any president I've ever known, and so I proudly stand with my fellow teabaggers in calling for proof of his birthplace. If he was born in America, then where's the proof? They can show us proof of his birth and record of newspaper clippings from the birth section the day he was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. But we say he's Kenyan! They say he's from Hawaii. I say Hawaii ain't no goddamn state. I'm proud to stand with my fellow teabaggers and call out the hospital records and governor's office, the Republican governor, and the newspaper editors from the year he was born, because they're all in a conspiracy to make us look stupid. My fellow teabaggers, they may call us stupid, or crazy, or paranoid, or racist, but we know better. I say let the critics spout all the science and reason and logic they want. I listen to my gut. Fox News and AM radio shock jocks are my source for information, because they've never steered we conservatives wrong in the past. Hear me, my fellow teabag enthusiasts. There is another threat out there that we are marching against today, and that threat may be even more a threat to our freedom than science, brown people, or gays. I am talking to you, my fellow teabag aficionados, of our greatest enemy, math. My friends, we have gone to great lengths every tax day since that brown Muslim foreigner took office to protest his tax plan. And we have protested these taxes to great success thanks to the support of our proud sponsor, Fox News. Can Democrat fascist stimulus package but, uh, you could hang it from your mirror too, like fuzzy dice. And here are the map to show you just how widespread these are. Comes from Newt Gingrich's organization. Bam! Fox News is out in front of this. Protests across the country and may involve millions of people. Hopefully, millions of people. Protest against the Obama administration tax policies. We're live on Tax Enough already for Tea Party Day. But my friends, my teabag buddies. The enemy math has been trying to take the winds out of our sails ever since we got started protesting these taxes. We know the truth that taxes are too high. After all, Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh tell us every day that taxes are too high. But our enemies would dare to contradict them and our righteous anger by pointing out that Obama actually signed a bill that cut taxes. But I didn't see it on Fox News, so I'd say such a bill never exists and was never signed. Some would like to point out that the largest portion of the stimulus bill we've been protesting was actually tax cuts. Well, who says? A bunch of grass-smoking high school kids. Bunch of nobodies, right? Okay, well, maybe some enormous tax cuts were in the stimulus, and the largest part of it. But taxes didn't go down. They went up when Obama took over, right? Right? 
Uh -huh. These are probably just some typical left-wing college kids playing jokes, trying to make us look dumb by showing the average federal income tax rate. Moo. Well, even if you believe this fringe radical group called the Treasury Department, that taxes are actually at a 50-year low... Jeez, really? Lowest in 50 years? Damn. All things considered, that's... that's pretty f low taxes. Well, anyway, that just means that the Treasury Department is another one in on the grand worldwide conspiracy to make us look stupid. We'll still protest Obama's taxes. His lowest in 50 years. Well, taxes are bad. Even low taxes. Ta taxes are bad. I mean, these low taxes. Always bad, they, and they serve no purpose but to take money from hard-working Caucasians and give it to minorities. That's still what we believe, right? The blacks put him in office, therefore, and therefore he is more dedicated to the black community than he would be the white community. I mean, Glenn Beck told us that Obama's taxes were reparations, that he was doing reparations for colored people. And Beck wouldn't just say that for ratings. He'd... No. I mean, people can show us how tax brackets are actually based on income and how 90% of Americans actually got a tax cut, regardless of race. But we're going to disregard the numbers. I mean, do you see what math and numbers are doing? Math, in all of its liberal left-wingedness, is showing us numbers that contradict what we believe. So it is now just another untrustworthy arm of the liberal agenda, just like science and logic. Math may be able to show us in simple terms that taxes are low and not high. Glenn Beck tells us to protest the lowest taxes in 50 years. So we will. I mean, we went through all the trouble of making all these signs. We, we made a lot of signs. We we bought all these tea bags to put on our heads because tea bags on our heads means that we're protesting taxes. I mean, if we accepted that these were the lowest taxes in 50 years, that that'd make us look pretty foolish at this point. I mean, shit. We made a slogan and everything. I mean, T E A T Party. The T E A stands for taxed enough already. I mean, we we've been chanting it and everything. We made buttons, t-shirts, hats with the slogan. Uh, I mean, we'd look pretty pretty stupid, pretty foolish if we accepted math at this point. I mean, if, if we accepted math at this point and the fact that we could be easily proven wrong with numbers, I mean, we would look really f***ing stupid. So, yeah. Right, well, we're still protesting money spent on subsidies for the poor, right? I mean, people can use math and calculators to show us that taxes are at their lowest point since Truman was in office, but, well, we can do that stuff too. Look. Here, here. This data is from the conservative economist Mark Zandi of the 2008 Republican Party presidential campaign. As you can see here, the across-the-board tax cuts we refuse to accept that they've already given us gave an extra 3% to economic growth for every dollar. Three whole cents they add to the economy for every dollar in tax cuts. Huh. Apparently the data also shows that permanent tax cuts we've been pushing for would end up spurring less than a dollar of economic growth for every dollar, adding to the debt. Huh. What, what's this? Uh, apparently the subsidies and unemployment compensation we've been protesting gives positive economic growth. Uh, food stamps actually more than any other uh, form uh, even gives more growth than tax cuts. Uh, government subsidies like unemployment and food stamps actually doing the most economic growth. We've been protesting them. Ah, fuck. You, you know, you know what, just... Oh, oh. All right, all right, all right. Oh. Fuck math. Fuck math.